What we're going to be talking about um, is the open canvas. And you say, what is an open canvas? Well, I'm here to tell you. So uh, it is a short exercise that we'll be asking you to look at after this call. Um, it's basically a bunch of boxes to fill out, uh, literally a box checking exercise, but I, it's one that is actually really quite useful. It's uh, in terms of, um, if we we're gonna keep on going back to some of the same sentences about how open uh, project leaders behave, and in this case, we're thinking about designing. So open leaders design and build projects that empower others to collaborate in an inclusive community. Um, and what I mean by this, um, if you remember the framework, the open leadership framework that Malvika referenced in one of our earlier um, presentations. So we're specifically looking at when we are thinking about our projects, how do we design our project in a way that is um, good for understanding so people can understand what's going on um, so that people can interact with you effectively. Uh, we're designing our project in a way that helps us to share things with people, uh, whether that be gifting some knowledge or um, some ideas or some software or hardware or whatever it may be that you are sharing with people. Um, and we're also looking at designing in ways that allow people to participate. Um, by the way, uh, when I share my screen, you can't see the Zoom window in front of it, can you? You can't see like a little video window. Uh, no? Yes? No? I don't know. Okay, excellent, right, because it's blocking half the screen. I didn't want it to be a battle. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, and the final thing about the open canvas, uh, it helps us write down and um, specify our ideas in ways that make it easy for people to participate and to feel included in part of the community. Um, so uh, if I move on to my next screen, is that too far? There we go. Right, the, so this is what an open canvas is. Uh, and so basically, um, it is adapted from the Lean Canvas. So if anyone's read, I think, the Lean Startup, uh, uh, then it has some ideas about filling out these boxes, writing down what exactly it is that you've been thinking about in your project in terms of who contributes, how they contribute, and so on. So I'll drill down into this a little bit more in detail. Uh, yeah, <sighs> keep on going to me slides. Okay, right. So... If you see um, on the bottom left, there is information about the project execution and the idea is that you sort of work through step by step. So you talk about who your contributors are, um, what they look like, um, what your user profiles may be. So who are you building your project for? You move along a bit further. How do these people uh, contribute, contributor channels? Um, so if you say, I'm thinking about who is going to be participating in my project, um, so they need to know, is this going to be within GitHub? Is it going to be some other sort of platform that I use? Um, and you give information like the unique value proposition. So why is the thing that I'm doing interesting to other people? Uh, I'm sort of hopping around here. I apologize. I'm going to hop over back further, let's say, to the problem as well. So what are we solving here? Um, and if so, once we've stated what the problem is, what is the solution that going to prove be providing to this problem. Um, and apologies for hopping around a little bit. Uh, uh, I will move on to the next slide. So we'll walk through this in a bit more clear detail. First of all, um, on the left, we have information about the product. Uh, so this is sort of tech oriented. So what you may be providing may not necessarily be a product. It may be a service or a protocol or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's a thing that you'll be sharing with other people. Um, and then on the other side of that, the community is the people who are going to be using and who are going to be contributing to your product. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, define your problem. So what is it that you are trying to solve? Um, and so hopefully perhaps with the vision and mission statement that you've been working on, you've been thinking about what this problem is. Uh, for us, for example, if I were to do this for open life science, the problem is science isn't always as open as I would like it to be. And then next of all, the solution in our case will be this program. Um, I don't think it's going to solve science entirely, <laughs> um, but I think definitely it helps to create more people who are able to work on sharing projects together. Um, moving along a bit further, how will you measure this? Um, so again, thinking through the example of the Open Life Science program, our metrics might be how many people have we trained, how many people, if we run a second round, how many people then go on to be mentors later on. So you might want to think about what metrics you can apply to your project. How would I measure whether or not my project is actually being successful in some way? Um, and then you think, okay, so I've got my big idea. How do I go and create it? You know, who do I need to speak to? Um, do I need to have computer resources? Do I need to have a lab? 
and so depending on your project, there may be different things that you need to start to get towards working that project. It may be networking connections, for example. And I mean, networking connections in the making friends with people and definitely not in the cabling uh, sense of things. <laughs> um, so then uh, continuing on, uh, think about who's contributing uh, and what would an ideal contributor look like? Um, that's not physically, but in terms of their personalities, their behaviors. So I might say that a contributor to open life science is a mentor or an expert who can share their knowledge. Uh, another type of contributor would also be the participants. You, uh, without this, without you, we wouldn't be going anywhere. Um, and then I say, oops, okay, this is an overview slide. <laughs> Sorry. So contributor profile should fulfill the, this one in Windows, covering things, should fulfill the needs required to build your product. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so basically the people who are contributing should be the people who can help you get those resources. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, user profiles. So this is slightly different from your contributor profiles. So for example, I suppose in this scenario, um, the participants for Open Life Science might also be the users. Or we might say that our users are people who um, then learn about open science in the future from you. Um, so think about who the target audience for your project is, and especially who the early adopters are. So if you had success, if you said my project is being openly shared with someone, who would that person be? Try and define that. Um, and contributor channels. Uh, next question. How do people actually come to you? How do they contribute? Uh, so in our case, uh, I, we haven't actually surveyed you, but my guess would be a lot of you heard of us through Twitter. Some of you might have heard of us through mailing networks. Um, uh, I know we did some talks. We did our webinar. So those would be the contributor channels for Open Life Science. And try and think about how you might gain new contributors for um, your channels uh, for your project as well. And then finally, the channels for users. So how will you gain new users? That might be the same way that you gain new contributors, or it might be a different way. Maybe you're doing a training workshop. Um, try and think through these exercises. And I know certainly when I did a lot of this personally, I felt like, okay, I'm filling this out, but it feels like I'm just being made to fill out a silly form. But then afterwards, having filled out and thought about um, how I'm going to uh, fill all of these out, I realized I thought very critically about my project. And it made me think and define it in ways that previously I might not have effectively done. Um, and there's a chat message. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, Himanshu forgot your laptop cable. Oh no, okay. Well, um, good luck Himanshu. Hopefully you can find your power cable. <laughs> um, okay, um, where was I on my slides? <clears throat> oh yeah, okay. So community engagement is talking about the channels, user channels and contributor channels. And finally, we have our unique uh, value proposition. So this is saying, having thought about who's contributing, how they're contributing, what resources I need, and what my problems are, what is the unique value? What am I offering to the world that is useful and interesting? Uh, and I like it here, what you offer and why you are different. I think that's a really good way of thinking about that. Um, and then we have a small example here. Um, this is for a Mozilla project called Contrib Contributor Badges for Science. I think the project ended up being called Paper Badger. Um, and so it sort of gives you a bit of an idea about how they thought through the problems um, and then added them in themselves. So saying there's a lack of recognition of certain contribution types in academic papers and that people weren't taking advantage of the web as a medium and then just sort of thinks through different ways to solve that, to measure that, basically by, by providing badges uh, when people author papers based on their contribution. So someone worked on the software, someone did the editing, someone wrote the words, someone did the lab protocols and so on. Um, so that's a really good example. I won't go through all of it now, um, but the slides are available and linked to from the agenda so you can review it yourselves. And I think that also the demo is in our notes as well. Um, and oh, that, is that my last slide? No, okay, nearly my last slide. Right, so if you want, uh, this is the link where you can actually go and um, access an open canvas for yourself. So make a copy of the document and then um, try and see if you can think through. And it's okay if you don't fill every single box. Maybe if you can't find any boxes, discuss that with a mentor and they can help you think through with the bits that you're missing. Um, but I definitely find it as a useful exercise to think about things. And so thinking back to um, what we've been doing, we're trying to empower um, researchers and academic leaders to become open science ambassadors. And hopefully this will help you design and structure some of your plans for further on.